you so much for ordering um, my first uh, barracks box for me, or otherwise known as you. Um, I'm really, really excited to create with everyone from a distance. I know that we aren't able to gather together in the studio. Hopefully, um, that will change. But in the meantime, um, I'm really excited to create with you, and I hope you'll be willing to share what you create. Um, before we get started, I just wanna make sure that everyone has the proper materials ready. You're going to need your canvas. Uh, you're gonna need the pencil, the marker, the paint brushes, and your pods of ink. You should have three pods of ink and one pod of white paint. They'll all be taped together in the corner with a little bit of green tape. Just be really careful when you open them. Um, sometimes the tape sticks and opens the lid when you take the tape off. So I apologize. I'm trying to come up with a better way to package things up, but uh, it's hard because what we're working with is so fluid. Um, it tends to leak through most conventional storage containers. Um, so speaking of what we're working with, uh, what we're working with today or this month, um, we're working with Bombay ink. Okay, so if you ordered a box, uh, the barracks box for kids, the kids did not get this type of ink. Um, they got a type of liquid watercolor that isn't nearly as vibrant when it dries, but it also uh, doesn't stain. This stuff, on the other hand, will stain. It'll stain your body. Uh, you'll notice I've got some blue spots on me. Um, it will stain basically anything it touches. So just be really careful when working with it to make sure that you're working on a surface that can get messy. Um, maybe put something underneath of it, especially for the, the flicking and the splattering. Um, otherwise, get comfortable, get yourself a beverage, kick back, relax, put on some music if you want to, and uh, let's get started. Hello there, everybody. Um, welcome to my very first uh, Natural Magic tutorial. Uh, we're going to get started with the fox as our first painting. Um, I started this off with the fox because I had a lot of positive feedback, and it's quite simple to break down into shape. Um, I'm working with a canvas board that will be slightly smaller than the canvas in your box. Um, but feel free if you wanna practice on a piece of paper before you do this on the canvas, by all means, take all the time you want. Uh, the only difference between what we're doing today and what we would do in the studio is that you can pause me. Okay, so at any point, feel the need to pause me. Uh, you can actually through the little options in the corner of the video, you can speed me up too. So if you find that I move a little uh, slow or I talk too slow in certain parts, you can just speed me up. Um, I won't take offense and I won't even know. So do what you gotta do. Today what we're going to do is we're gonna start with our pencil. Um, we're going to create this fox shape uh, and we're going to break it into sh to shapes. So when I teach this, and I know if you've been into a class with me before, I talk about how I teach children um, quite a bit because teaching children and teaching adults is very similar. Um, you guys just complicate things. So what we're going to do is we're gonna break this down into shape. And if we look at our fox shape and we take away all the extra things, we're really starting out with one circle down here, okay? One circle here and a third circle here so it's it's a scrambled snowman all right so what we're going to start with we want to work with something close to the center of our page and I want you to create a nice big circle now see how dark I am drawing I'm going to recommend that you do not draw this dark draw as light as you possibly can I'm only drawing this dark and heavy because it's hard for you to see through the camera if I do very very light lines the reason I want you to do light lines is so that if there's any lines you make mistakes, just leave them. When we paint, you won't see them um, or you can erase them. But when you get really dark and heavy like this, it becomes very difficult to erase them um, and the ink won't cover them up quite as well. So draw yourself one big snowman bump. The second snowman bump is going to look like it's falling off or the kids have built it and it's not quite, they're not tall enough and strong enough to get it all the way up, okay? 
So we've got the two, looks like our snowman's falling over, but the third ball is straight again, okay? So it's got a little bit of a lean to it, but it's not that big of a, a difference. Now with these three shapes in place, we can start with an ear. And the reason I like to start with the ear, because that curve can go all the way down the back like that. And all of a sudden our fox now has a back, okay? Then we're gonna come down along here at the bottom and we're gonna create this S shape, all right? And same thing, we're gonna sort of start off at the bottom. We're gonna go up and down. I didn't do a very nice curve there, but that's okay, you can take your time. Um, I'm gonna go back, and that's a pretty thin tail, so I'm just gonna add in a couple more sections until I think it looks appropriate, okay? Then, we're gonna go back up to the head. With our head, what we wanna do is build this chin shape. So we're gonna come off the, the chest, just like that, give it a little bit of a beard. And we're just gonna end it at the side of our little ball. And where we begin, we're going to drop in our muzzle. Okay, so it's just a rectangle, except we're just gonna put a little bit of an angle on the front side, okay? Just makes it a little bit more fox-like or canine-like. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to where this line began and we're going to give it a nice smooth curve and head straight for the corner of the nose. Okay. And this is another reason why I want you to draw lightly because we're going to come back and we'll erase these lines in here so that we've got this nice clear chest. Okay. Continuing, we're going to start where the nose meets our circle and we're just going to draw a big curve. A smile, looks like he's got a mask on, and then you can recreate that again and again, okay? And depending on how much space you have, how wide you've made them, there's room on the example here for four. I only managed to fit three in there. That's okay. All right. Next, since I'm up here, I'm just going to draw in the second ear. Then I'm going to work on this cheek, the cheekbone, the fluff, so we'll start, again, we're following some of those circles that we started with, okay? We're gonna draw another one here, like that. And then don't forget the little back point. It just shows that, you know, he has two sides to his face, okay? And then you can put in the little detail for the eye. You want to draw the square in for the nose? You can. Go ahead. Now, don't worry too much about all the detail up here. We'll come back to that in a moment. We're going to go into here. Um, so we're going to start at the chest. And if we look here, we've got this beautiful curving arm, and we've got some chest. So we're going to take the edge of this, and we're going to drag it down like that. Okay, and that's going to be this line here. And then you can give it an extra little lump there to give it some more chest, okay? Once we've got that done, we're gonna follow some curves to create some details inside. So if you look here, we have one line, nice smooth curve that mimics the back line, okay? So we've got this back line here. So I'm gonna use that back line as a guide to create two more lines like that. Okay, and then inside these, I fit eight in here. The, the reason was um, I was working with chakras, so that was sort of the idea. But fit as many as you want, or as what you can just not fuss over it at all and just see what happens. But try to get some full circles in here. Okay, and if you notice I got a little bit of extra space here, I'm not gonna worry about that too much. It's not gonna hurt a thing, okay? Now, I want to fill in this area here a little bit, so I'm going to continue to make my foxtail a little fluffier because I don't like how I finished that off. And then I'm going to put a curve in here. Okay. 
and then we've got some details here. So what I'm going to do is I'll take my marker and I'm just going to outline the things that I like already and then we can bring in some details. So I'm going to just outline the nose, I'm going to outline the muzzle of the dog, I'm going to go all the way down the chest and back up, remembering we're not outlining anything inside that chest, okay? Then I'm going to go up and over the head, around the first ear, I'll go back and outline the second ear, I'll draw in those curved lines, I'll draw in the cheek, I'll draw in the other cheek tuft and the cheek in the background. I can draw the eyeball, okay, and I'm just going to paint the whole thing in with my, I draw my, okay, I'm going to follow those nice lines, so we've got those nice smooth curves, okay, I'm going to outline the tail work. And just like in any of my uh, paint classes or if you've come to my inking or drawing classes, don't stress about making it look identical to mine. If you look at this one and this one, they're not going to turn out the same either. It's just about having that creative fun and creating something that you're proud of. Okay, so I've got that line there. And don't feel like you have to rush to do this. You can watch what I'm doing and then come back if you like and rewatch what I'm doing to make sure that you're doing the things that you think look right. Okay, but it's totally up to you. This is meant to be a little bit intuitive. It's meant to be relaxing, almost meditative. So if you get inspired to go your own way with some of the patterns and designs that I'm doing, pff, go for it. Run with it, okay? So this is the basic outline of the fox. All of the other lines that I didn't outline don't matter, okay? From here, we can start adding in some details that will make our fox a little bit more interesting. So for example, I'll put some dots all over the place here. I'll add in the details on the ears just for something a little different. Okay, I'll put some lines in here. Okay. And if you think that what I'm doing is a little too busy, then don't do all the lines that I'm doing. Feel free to skip some, space them out a little differently. It'll look great no matter what you choose to do, okay? Um, okay. Now you may have already watched uh, your kid do this tutorial if they got um, a barracks box for kids. Um, and it, you will notice it is slightly different. I gave you a slightly um, more detailed uh, palette, but I'm also taking a different approach to teaching it just because you guys are a little bit different to teach. Um, but you'll get the same message out of it and you'll have the same amount of fun. So don't be afraid to watch the kids one if you'd like to do this as a family project, okay? I highly recommend it. Okay, and just going to, yeah, okay, and like I said, if you want to put some more details in there, you absolutely can. I think I'm going to leave this foxtail a little bit more simple, um, but it's entirely up to you. So at this point, this is a good time, uh, just finish outlining anything, uh, out erase any of the things that you really don't like. There we are. So we can get rid of our pencil and our marker. You're going to want to make sure that you've got a cup of water with your brushes 
um, as well as your four pods of ink. We're going to start with the background. Um, so you need your blue, the blue pod of ink, some red ink, okay? And I also gave you some tangerine ink. Um, it's a very bright orange, okay, made by the same company. All right. I gave you, if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure I gave everyone blue, but that's what I'm going to be using. So if yours is turquoise or a little bit different, I did customize the colors and blend things in a little bit, but I'm going to show you ways that you can actually make a bunch of your own colors. Um, so if you want to get brave, by all means go for it. So starting out, we're going to work with um, our background color first. So our background color is that blue. If we move everything else off to the side, I'm just going to move this. Okay, I'm going to use one of the larger brushes and with just a little bit of water. You'll notice um, mine has a little bit of a tint to it. I do this on purpose so that you can see where I'm spreading water out and I'm not too worried if things are slightly different in color. It won't hurt. Okay, so I'm just outlining. Okay. And don't be afraid to use a lot of water. There is nothing wrong with using lots of water in this case. And I'm going to just spread this out and notice I'm moving quickly and I'm not being very neat about things and that's okay. All right, there. So I'm going to start with that and I'm going to just dip my brush and I'm going to come back and outline it. And you should notice as long as the water hasn't dried, it will start spreading out rapidly the moment the brush touches. The surface of the canvas because it's so liquid that the water just and the ink become one okay so you'll notice if you've got lots of ink so this is where I started outlining you've got lots of dark color it'll stay that dark and then if you look over here things get a little lighter because I've used more water now this is when you come back with just water and start filling things in a little bit more and if you want them to stay lighter, just use more water. Okay. You can also get a little bit of water and a little bit of blue on your brush and you can just splatter if you like. Just make sure uh, you're holding your finger and moving the brush. Okay. You don't really want to be doing a full on hammer swing or a baseball swing to try and get some splatters unless you're outside or in a space that you can get paint on your walls and your floor and your ceiling because that will happen. Okay, now I'm just going to do a few more here and you'll notice these canvas boards are a little waxy so the water is going to sit on them but when that water evaporates it'll soak up just nicely. Okay, so I'm just going to start connecting some of these dots. Okay. And again, I'm not really concerning myself with being messy. I'm not really concerning about concerning myself about trying to control what the paint and ink is doing. I'm just spreading things out. Dabbing along, being okay with what happens. If you're not okay with what happens, well, don't worry because you can just let this dry and do some more splatters and drips and dribbles over top. This isn't like watercolor paint where the paint uh, comes back to life when you get it wet again. This stuff, when it dries, it dries and it's not going anywhere. Okay, so spread it out. Now, since you guys are a little bit different than kids, not by much, but um, I thought that you might like to learn a little bit about um, color blending and altering colors um, just to get a different feel for things. So 
you can do this inside your cup or if you have a different container or a palette you want to work in you can do that too um, there's lots of paint in there so you should be able to do at least two paintings uh, with all the paint that you have so if you're interested in doing some variation in colors in your background um, what we can do is alter the blue with um, a nice clean brush and a little bit of our red okay and you just take that you can mix it into the blue and I recommend when you're trying to change the color um, just have a little test strip of paper close by to test out your colors, okay? So we know exactly what the color looks like on our canvas, but what happens when we add a little bit of red to it? So that's our basic color. Okay, and I'm just gonna just brush it together. And now we've got this really beautiful purple violet hue, okay? And you can take this right off the paper if you like. This is kind of my cheat way of doing it. And okay, because that ooh, couple drops of ink or that paintbrush load of ink goes so far. It really goes so far. Okay. And because the canvas is so wet, it's going to drag those colors out into opposite directions and it's just going to spread out naturally. I'm going to let it happen. I'm not going to try to control it. Okay, if you'd like, you can wash that brush again, dip it back in the red and give it another pass. Okay, and you're gonna get sort of a deep magenta. And if you think that it would be cool to add that deep magenta in there, by all means, um, I'm just gonna dab it in a little bit. Knowing that I've got so much blue in the background, it might be uh, difficult for that magenta to take over some space but that's okay. It will still give that illusion of some different colors in the sky. Okay, so whenever you're happy with that, that's great. Now, another thing you could do is just splatter clean water onto because it will hold space. It will spread out. It'll give it a bit of a tie-dye effect. It'll just push the ink away from wherever those little drops landed just like that okay now if you find that what you've done is too saturated and you don't like it you can go ahead and dab 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 a section so if you look here I have a reasonable amount of water everything is staying where it's supposed to it's not running if you look over here this side has become a bit of a river I'm not too worried about it um, but you can take a napkin or a sponge or a rag, whatever you're working with, and you can just soak up some of that excess water. It will take away some of the texture that you had just created, but it'll bring in a new texture, okay? And it's up to you to decide what you like and what you don't like. Sometimes I just experiment. So you'll notice things have gone very light all of a sudden, and I'm okay with that. But just to show you, you could do this and think, oh no, I hate it. You can just come back and do some more splattering, okay? And you can do this over and over and over again until you're content, all right? There, okay? At this point, what you wanna do is just give this some time to dry. It won't take very long to dry because of the canvas and the way it soaks up the ink and the water. Of course, if you've got some big puddles, it may take a little bit longer, um, but just set this aside in uh, somewhere where it can lay flat to dry. If you have a nice window with some sunlight, it'll dry even faster. Um, but you just wanna let this dry because we want to make sure the entire background is dry before we start painting this beautiful fox in because if you try to paint it in right now, the ink will drag out just like all of our little ink dots did. That water just wants to pull it in all directions and we'll end up with brown foxes and blue spots inside our fox. So we don't want that. 
Okay, so just take a quick break, maybe refill your drink, and come back when you're ready and everything is dry. Okay. Okay, so our fox background should be nice and dry. Um, yours will probably look a little different than mine just because of the, the texture and the surface of the canvas I'm working on. Um, I apologize for not having the same, give you a better example, but you guys sold me out of all my supplies, which is the best possible problem, so hopefully you don't mind. Um, what we're going to work with next is our tangerine and our bright red. Um, again, it's up to you to sort of decide where you want things to go, but I'm here to just give you a good idea of how this stuff works, okay? Um, Working with just the raw ink, okay, so just making sure you got a nice clean brush, um, you can go ahead, and I'll just drag a nice bright orange along the back here. You can use the color without any water, and it's very, very vibrant. But you can also drag that color out and spread it out with a little bit of water. So what you'll end up with is a light area and a more vibrant area. And if you find that everything has sort of washed out, you can always come back and brush it in so it's a little bit more vibrant. And it will dry this color, okay? So you're just gonna go along and fill in whatever section you feel inspired to fill in. As I was saying with the background, you can blend these colors with each other. Um, what I recommend is sort of working with one color until you decide that's enough of that color. And then you can come back with this, the second color. And so I'm just filling them in. quickly, really simply. You want to sort of be a little bit more careful doing this part than you were with the background. The background's meant to get all your wild and crazy out, and this is meant to sort of bring you back into calm focus. Okay? Um, I'm going to put it in a line and a line and a line. And I'm not going to spread it out just yet. But again, I'm just going to alternate. Okay. Just like that. Working in patterns with this stuff is really fun. Okay. And again, if you would prefer to have your fox to be more red than orange, by all means, just go for it. Um, I'm going to decide that I'm going to take a break from my orange for now. I'm going to work with the red a little bit. So I'm just going to come in right in here. Okay, and I'll give you an example of how the red will look when you wash it out a little bit. So that just means adding more water to it. So it's a lighter color, not as vibrant. Okay, so I'm going to just use that as an example here. So I'm going to do a nice dark red outline. Give my brush a really good wash, make sure it's nice and clean. And then I'm just going to paint this out. Okay, so it may look a little pink to your eye, but that's okay. Unless, of course, you're like, I hate it, which is also okay. But the nice thing about this stuff is that you can just paint over it. So I'll just show you a few ways that you can play with this. The ink is really fun too because you can layer the colors. Okay. So I'll 
I'll show you what I mean. So what I mean by layering the colors, ink isn't completely opaque, which means it's a little see-through, which is why it's such a concern when it comes to thick dark pencil lines, because we'll see them, okay? But we can also use that to our advantage. So I'm going to come back in with some of that yellow, and I'm just going to, or orange, my goodness. I'm going to just layer that over top of the red, and you'll notice it changes the color. Okay, we've got a third color now. Okay. So you can mix the colors together on your canvas and create some new colors. So now it'll just create sort of a brick orange or a dark orange. Again, if you wanted to do another fun custom color, um, you can choose to drop a little bit of that blue into your orange, but like the smallest amount. And I'll just show you quickly. Again, with my handy dandy piece of paper. So if I take a big swatch of orange and blend it around like that. I'm going to take the smallest, and I really do mean the smallest drop. I'm even going to wipe my brush off because that's probably too much still. And I'm just going to do a couple dots and then I'm going to wash my brush again because that's how strong this blue will take over. Then I'll saturate my brush in orange and I'll mix them together. Okay. And I can always come back and take another drop. See how fast that took over? Okay, you'll never win that war against that blue. So I'm just going to start again, just to show you guys that you can start over too. So there's my orange, and I'll even just steal a little bit there. Okay, and you can get sort of this dark, rusty orange, or you can even drag it into a brown. So I'm just going to come in, add some of those details here. I'm going to add in, let's see. And they're not supposed to be drastic changes, but just subtle, just very subtle. Okay, so you want to make sure that the whole fox is covered completely. And then the final step is to work with your white, and you're just going to touch up. Oh, I missed a spot. Don't forget around the space. There. Okay, sorry about that, friends. With the white, we're going to use this white. This is actually acrylic paint. Okay, so that's just going to clean things up. Anything that um, bled into the white areas will get covered. You may notice that it picks up a little bit of the pigment. That's okay. You can just love it the way it is. Or if you're like, there is no way I will ever love the way that is, that's okay too. Just give it a moment to dry and put a second coat on it. Okay, so this will just clean things up. And you want to make sure that this is just going to seal those areas that we didn't paint. It'll also cover up any pencil lines that didn't get painted over. And if you really want to, you can do a little shine on the nose and a dot in the eye to finish things off. Okay. And that's all there is to the Natural Magic Fox. Like I said, I would absolutely love to see how yours turns out. I would love to see uh, some process shots. So if you wanted to take one while you were working on the background or while you were working on the drawing, some steps. Let's see how your painting evolved. I'd also love to see where you end up putting it or if you give it as a gift to someone, I'd love to see that too. Um, I hope you really enjoy this project. Um, I am very much looking forward to creating with you throughout the summer. Um, next month, our theme is the ocean. Uh, so we'll be doing a jellyfish painting. So 
So look forward to an entirely new palette of colors as well as new supplies. And feel free to save any excess ink that you were working with this month because you can always use it to do some custom touches to your upcoming projects in July and August. Okay? So thank you so much, everybody. Um, happy creating. And I look forward to seeing everybody's updates.